This is a Timeless Television presentation. Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Starring Richard Crane. In Bobby's Comet, Chapter 2. When we last saw Rocky Jones, he had landed his spaceship on the planet of Fornax to investigate the source of the mysterious missiles that had been fired toward the Earth. A man with his small mind is too ready to accept the apparent. Now, we've always believed that life wasn't possible on Fornax. But look, Rocky, look, those pyramids, now, they are not a phenomenon of nature. There must be a civilization here, too. Come on, Rocky, let's have a look around. We better see what we're in for first, Bobby. Winky, sir, uncage a mechanical canary. We'll first test the atmosphere out there. Can't take chances in a strange world. Go on, Bertie, get out there and investigate. And listen to me, Chirp Chirp. If you tell me that I've got to put on a spacesuit, I'm going to pluck all your tail feathers out one at a time the hard way. Professor, would you take the atmosphere reading, please? Of course. Lena, let's bring the log up to date. Oh, dear. I do hope I brought the right clothes. <laughs> So far, there's no trace of dangerous radiation. The temperature and humidity have dropped slightly from inside the ship. Nice little birdie. Landing on Fornax successful at 1410. But full acceleration was needed to counteract extreme gravitational pull. Our fuel is exhausted. You got that? There is evidence of a skilled human life. And we can only hope that the power which projected their missile to Earth can be adapted to our spaceship so that we can return again. I am hoping we will have the friendly cooperation of the people who probably live on this moon. Well? The birdie says tweet tweet, Rocky. It's spring and it's safe to go outside. That's right, Rocky. Why, it's comparable to a May Day in Connecticut. <laughs> Mm, I can almost smell the flowers. <laughs> Roaring rocket. Let's go out and have a real sniff. <laughs> <laughs> Enter that in the log, Vena. <laughs> oh, Rocky. One moment, please. You see, Rocky? I was right about their lack of alloys for steel. And their architecture it dates far back. Yes. I wonder how much those stone blocks weigh. Ooh, twice what they would on Earth. Uh, the ratio of weight here is two pounds to our one. We'll all feel it. And we'll be a lot heavier, too. Well, let's go meet the people. The seal is broken, sir. The escape hatches and ports are all open, and that's the fresh air of Fornax you smell. Can we have a look around now, Rocky? Sure, Bobby. And you'll probably see plenty. Ovina, haven't you been putting on weight lately? Me? Put on weight? No, I don't think so. Oh, uh, why not try the cargo scales? You better go with her, Bobby, and make sure she gives us an honest count. She doesn't look any heavier to me. No. Wait and see. She weighs 236 pounds. <laughs> Jumping satellites, Vera. You've got to go easy on the mashed potatoes. Well, shooting satellites. This is super cosmic. Hey, Professor, you said Connecticut. This is more like Palm Beach, Florida. 
I sure wish a 200-pound bathing beauty would walk by. Where's the reception committee? Is there anyone here to greet us? Isn't there anyone here? Hello! Like you, Moon. Uh, you, us, the good friends, huh? Heap cosmic pals? No? You have journeyed from Earth? Ah, then the flight of our missile was a success. It attracted your attention to Fornax. I'm very glad you like you, Moon. But you speak our language. How is this possible? I am prepared for this occasion. You are not the first Earth people to visit us. Cemetery love Vinivex. Come on, Tol. I am Zoravac, the elected ruler of Fornax. Well, happy horizon, Mr. Zoravac. This is my boss, Rocky Jones. This is Vina and Professor Newton and Bobby and my name's Winky. Uh, welcome to you and your crew. Thank you, Zoravac. It was our pleasure to make this trip to your moon. When we return to Earth, others will follow to establish trade relations with you. Yes, and of great mutual gains, Zorovac. Our steel and metals in exchange for your... <laughs> Professor Cardos. Eight years, Professor Newton. And I was the first to explore Fornax. Congratulations on your successful landing. I crashed. And I owe my life to the care given me by Zorovac and his Vansum. Oh, forgive me. Vansum means wife in English. You'll find me a changed man, Professor. Isn't it exactly as I said, Zorovac? Yes, Professor Cardos. But we lack the materials to build a spaceship like this. Well, let me show you how this baby's powered. That's where we're going to need your help, Mr. Zorovac. Yes, Rocky. Carlos, don't I remember the name in connection with a murder and then he disappeared? Yes, Rocky. Lost in space was the general belief. While he was attempting an experiment for personal gain, he ruthlessly killed his two assistants. Oh, he was a brilliant man, but an egoist and extremely ambitious. Rare treat. Your spaceship is a miracle to my eyes. Well, now let me show you some of the miracles of Fornax. My Von Soon will welcome a charming companion like you, Vina. And Bobby. I'm sure my daughter, Volika, will welcome you. Volika, huh? Let's go, Mr. Zorovac. I've always wanted to meet a girl out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Please join us. You're about to see a boundless luxury. Zorovac. Winky and I better stay here and check the spaceship. We'll join you later. Rocky. Can't we get in on some of that luxury? Why spend our time tinkering, Rocky? Let's go out and see the town, huh? Sure, Winky. But let's see it first on Visiograph. Strange things can happen on a strange moon. Uh, perhaps this added modulator will cut the density. I don't know. We're here, we can see it with these things. And you want to see it on that thing. You got it, Rocky. There it is. Now for a look inside. Oh, those boundless luxuries. Bring in the sound, Winky. Mm. 
So this missile was our only means to communicate with you on Earth. Yes, yes, of course, but uh, now about this fantastic power. On Earth, you would call it a highly sensitive form of silicon. For use in the missile, it was pulverized, captured in an object no larger than this. And a series of pinpoint escape valves provided the thrust, giving tremendous power. Then it can be adapted to the rocket tubes of a spaceship? It is the only power great enough to counteract the gravitation of Fornax. Without it, escape is not possible. Well, that's settled. Since they're friendly, we have nothing to worry about. Oh, that running around sure gets you out here. More than back on Earth. Daddy? That's right, Bolica. Daddy, can you play baseball? Baseball? An Earth game, Zorovac. Oh, it's played all over now. <laughs> Vina! <laughs> wow, get a load of Vina. <laughs> Professor Cardos, I envy you your eight years on Fornax. Hmm. Please, Professor, make yourself at home. We'll return presently. Hey, Rocky, let's get in on... Professor Cardos, they talked about friendly trading, about the mutual gain of an exchange. But isn't it possible that we could become friends? Zorovac, I warned you of the way Earthmen make satellites of every planet and moon in space. They first deceive, then colonize, rob, and enslave. For the time being, we'll play their game of deceit. Good old Viziograph. I'm sure glad you decided to tinker with it. Professor Cardos, are a few moments with deceitful Earth people going to destroy the work of years? Point one of our plan is complete. We know the accuracy of our missile. And they have sent us a spaceship. Now for point two. There's something in those walls that positive rays can't cut. So you want to see Fornax with these, huh, Winky? All right, let's go. Right, Skipper. Bobby's right. Running around on this moon sure gets you. My atoms are slowing down. Calculations are positive and the warhead attached, Zorovac. We are now prepared to fire a missile every Earth month. Four of them should turn the trick. Look, Professor Cardos. That's the spaceship that will take us into their communication zone to negotiate a surrender on our terms. I wasn't thinking about the spaceship. You have always taught me that we were surrounded by a galaxy of enemies. There was no such thing as friendship in the universe. Now that I've seen these people from Earth, I'm beginning to question your teachings. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, I must tell Zorovac about our friendly visitors from the Earth. He'll be interested in the way you have returned our offer of hospitality. Space Ranger's job is to keep peace. Mr. Zorovac, don't you believe a word Professor Cardos told you? We don't try to conquer anybody. The laws of the United Worlds of the Solar System give every planet and moon their independence. And the only fighting we do, Mr. Zorovac, is when someone gets out of line. Zorovac, you... There's only one way to settle the discrepancy in the stories about the Earth. I will go with the Space Rangers and find out for myself. Zorovac, Carlos! Professor Newton, you and Vina and the boy will remain as hostages under the rule of my von Soom. That's superstellar with us, Mr. Zorovac. You'll like her. I'm sure I will, Bobby. We will give the Earth people all possible assistance in adapting our power to their spaceship. Hey, Rocky, we've really got some thoroughbreds in the harness. Oh, good. Oh, Professor, did you take an instrument calculation? Yes, Rocky, and it's truly astounding. The mass of the rocket itself is M.8, mass of payload, M.5, and mass of necessary fuel load, only M.2. That gives us a blast-off mass of M.15, which balances against equation of exhaust velocity. And we thus have an ideal mass ratio of 2.72.1. Fine, Bobby. Glad to hear it. What do you say, Winky? Well, sir, uh, I'd say that she's going to work all right. Good. We'll try test flight tonight. Please, Mr. Rocky, may I go? Oh, sorry, Bollica, but I'd better make the test hop alone. Alone, by alone, he means the two of us. This time I mean alone, Winky. By theory and calculation, we believe this new power is adaptable to the rocket ship, but a test flight may disprove our beliefs. Testing. Testing. Stand clear. All clear, Rocky. Hey, she sounds good, Rocky. Yeah, and she feels like there's plenty of zip. Hey, look, Rocky. Can't you be a good guy? Change your mind and let me climb in with you, will you? The next hop's a big one. I'll shake her down and see you in the morning. Rocky. Yeah? Hey, look, keep with an astrophone pickup, will you? And, and keep talking, you know, make like a disc shock. Yeah, I don't feel a bit sleepy. Sure, Winky. Well, the heat's on. I'll call in once I'm settled in space, partner. Sure is powerful stardust you're packing, Rocky. And you wouldn't let me in on the fun. Well, this is what I think of you. Bah! And the same thing goes for me, too, Rocky. Bah! And that's telling him, Bobby. You see, Skipper, you got a mutiny on your hands. Come on down. We'll put you in irons. Hey, Rocky. We're not really mad at you, Rocky. Rocky. Rocky, can you hear me? Come in, Rocky. Rocky. Rocky, please. Calling the XV2. Come in, Rocky. Look, Rocky, will you answer me? Calling the XV2. Come in, Rocky. Calling the XV2. Come in, Rocky. Calling the XV2. Come in, Rocky. Still no answer. 
calling me XD2? No. You know, I was just thinking about something Secretary Drake once said to me. He said, just wait till you have a pal out there in space and he doesn't answer. There's nothing quite as frightening as silence. And then what? Professor, if the orbit jet is still in flight and, and Rocky, well, if everything's still okay out there, what about the fuel? We've no way of knowing the ratio of consumption, Winky. Oh, I'm afraid I have no answer for any of your questions, my boy. Hey, Balika, look. Don't you see something? No, Bobby. You've been watching the sky so long, you're starting to see spots. That's not a spot. Come in. He's still not talking. Hi, Rock. Hello, Winky. Vina. Gosh, Rock, it's good oh. to see you. It sure is. Welcome back to base, Skipper. Hey, I forgot. We're mad at this guy. What's the idea of not calling in and, and throwing a chill at us? Oh, believe me, Winky, I had a chill thrown at me. Along with an altimeter that hit me right here. What happened, Rocky? All the instruments, including the astrophone, were knocked out. The blast-off thrust pulled them right out of the panel. We'll have to find some way to lessen the power. Well, that's no great problem, Rocky. But what about the instruments? Oh, I can take care of those. A little glue and some string and rubber bands. But the important thing is that the blast-off thrust balance exactly to the exhaust velocity, thereby maintaining the ideal mass ratio, which I believe is 2.72 Point one. However, the toggle switch, which runs the franistat, is sometimes thrown out of kilter, which only proves, as the old man said to the kangaroo, that science is a wonderful thing. Isn't that right, Bobby? Right, Winky. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Rocky. Thank you. And now we can... What do you call it? Oh, yes. Blast off for Earth. Yes, so we're back. As soon as we make some repairs and all of the power ratio. I'm sorry we have to leave you and Vina and Bobby behind. Be sure and keep a close watch on Carlos until I get back. Don't worry about us. We'll be all right, Rocky. So if I... Same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger.
a timeless television presentation.